morning, this is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Pepper Master, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning, and hello, kids, and welcome to season four and episode number, what are we at now? 386. 386, yes, of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Yay! Today, recording day, is Tuesday, May 21st, post-long weekend. Hope you had a beaverific one. I sure did. Of course, then again, my favorite day of the whole year took place on the weekend, so. Mm, your birthday. Yes. The one day of the year that it's actually all about me. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> no, I'm not denying that. X number of years ago, on this day, I decided to grace this planet with my presence. You may thank me. <laughs> so, yes, great, 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 great weekend. Family, friends, a little art, a little culture, some cake. Mm. Right? Cake. Ice cream. And all calorie free because it's birthday, which yeah. is the law. At least here in the realm of the Beaver Lodge. Queen Beaver said so. She makes the rules. So, um... Yeah, lovely weekend, so I hope you had one too. I'm your host, the eager beaver pronouns, he, him, hey, Mr. Reaver, a. and with me, as you can hear, is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. A big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. Mr. Grizzly, how's your mental health today? Um, okay, I'm just really tired. It's, uh... It's long weekends are, are enjoyable, but you seldom get any rest during a long weekend. And that was definitely the case for me. It was uh, nonstop, back to back, wall to wall busyness. I mean, I was at a barbecue yesterday, uh, a Brazilian barbecue, where the um, amount of steak that was served was <laughs> like, Meat my good Lord. <laughs> Meat sweat level? Oh, way beyond that. I went to Brazilian barbecue once, had meat sweats once. Never again do I want them. <laughs> it was oh, not no. fun. Oh, the, there was so much food. It was great. Oh, my God. It was so, so The so food was great. Yeah, the yeah. meat sweats were not fun. At all. Yeah, was, um, multiple helpings of steak. Let me see. I think I did take a picture of round two as it was about to get put onto the, onto the queue. And uh, it was a, he went with charcoal briquettes, proper charcoal briquettes. Ooh. Uh, where did it go? Sorry. Oh, no, I do have Ooh. it somewhere. But, uh, that needed more bass. <laughs> I have it somewhere. I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll zip it up here in a minute and I'll, I'll, I'll put it on the screen so that everybody can see how much food was consumed. It was just, oh, good Lord, so much food. <laughs> so much food. So, um, yeah. 
like I mentioned, uh, everything went well here. Uh, I'll have a couple of photos for you as well, kits uh, later on um, from uh, from the play and stuff. But uh, yes, last show, uh, sold out house, studying the ration, family was there. Uh, niece and nephew got to see it. It's only the second time they've seen their uncle Douglas on stage. Mm. And um, the most um, cherished thing of all yeah. is... Um, um, my niece gave mm. me a uh, friendship bracelet. Oh, cool! Cool. Uh huh. Boom, boom, boom. I'm in the club. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I mean, come on. When you have one niece, mm. I guess the second she sees you, she says, "I got something for you," and puts a friendship bracelet on. It's like that's a good moment. Oh, yeah. it's all a lot of good. So it's it, it was a beautiful weekend. All right. Did you do anything this weekend? Yeah, yeah. Did a lot of work around the house. Did some work in the studio. Did some work at Bridget's place. Um, got a lot of walks in with uh, Ms. Lola, and of course Brazilian barbecue yesterday. And there was round three. Oof. Oh, no, that was round two of the stakes. There was three rounds of stakes like that. Whoa. Three. I, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of food. Woohoo. All right. Uh, in the news, Kids and Cubs, relatively slow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not a lot. Um, well, there was the whole, you know, two, two, the Donald Trump uh, saying that he wants to form a create a unified Reich literally yeah. in one of his videos, one of his promo videos. I'm like, eh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. listen, when it comes to over the next week and a half, mm -hmm. anything that comes out of that pie hole, yeah. just know that it's tainted by the fact that Michael Cohen has ended his testimony mm -hmm. yeah. and that the defense, that the prosecution has rested. And that the defense is probably going to present maybe one witness. And even though, what's his face here? Says, oh, I'll love to testify. Well, he, he's, listen, when it comes to testifying, he's been like Mike, Mariah Carey. Mm -hmm. He's sung every note. <laughs> <laughs> Rather than pick one. So probably not going to testify unless it's like super, super Hail Mary. And they think, you know, it's like, well, maybe like we can convince one person on the jury somehow who might be a little... All right. If I do a give him the old razzle dazzle on the stand, maybe I can get one, but uh, probably not. So it could be quite likely because we had a long weekend, but this coming weekend is a long weekend in mm -hmm. the United States. Yes. So, um, and this is pretty much open shut case if you have 12 people on the jury who actually are impartial and are actually looking at the evidence. So uh, this could very well be that uh, the defense presents this one witness. Uh, they rest today. Mm -hmm. Probably some type of technical witness. They rest today. The jury is uh, deliberating. And uh, you know what? Uh, let's get a decision in by Thursday because we want to go for a long weekend. Mm -hmm. So um, Ronald Frump Rump Roast, I guess, may actually be a convicted criminal by the end of the week. It's entirely possible. So he's going to be moving a lot of wind. Well, here's here's the video. I have 30 second clip of this video. You got to see this. It's just bombastic to say the least, but I'll, I'll pause it at a very specific uh, moment. What happens after Donald Trump wins? What's next for America? What's that say right there? creation of a unified Reich. Whoa! The economy booms. American energy is unleashed and an end to crushing taxes. The border is closed and the largest deportation in history is under... 15 million illegal aliens deported. Way. No more wars as we focus on home. No more wars. Law and order is restored. The American dream is back, and the best is yet to come. 
Make America great again. What happens after Donald Trump wins? Uh, uh, just, yeah. Did, did we just see that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 15 million illegal aliens deported. You do realize that will crush the U.S. economy if that wish to happen. Do you know how many industries rely upon illegal aliens to get shit done? I'm not joking when I say that. Because they're paid under the table at, at less than minimum wage. And these businesses rely upon it. What will happen if they deport 15 million people? Their economy is going to crash. You can't take 15 million people out of the workforce. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Bombastic. Over the top. Whoa. I told you. I, I, I'm speechless. Mm -hmm. I know. He literally, he keeps telling us exactly <laughs> who he is. You know? A unified okay. break. Oh, my word. Yeah, AP's picked up on the story, too. The, um, social media account shares a campaign video with a headline about a unified Reich. Like, yeah. Oh, my word. <sighs> yeah, well, I, I know. Yeah, okay. no, you're seldom speechless, but here we are. Yeah. I, I'm going to the AP article. A video posted to Donald Trump's account on a social media network Monday included references to a unified Reich among hypothetical news headlines if he wins the election in November. The headline appears among messages flashing across the screen, such as Trump wins and economy booms. Other headlines appear to be references to World War I. The word Reich is often largely associated with Nazi Germany's Third Reich, though the references in the video Trump shared appear to be a reference to the formation of the modern pan-German nation, unifying smaller states into a single Reich or empire in 1871. Yeah, except there... Uh, what states are... Is he unified? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the 30-second 30, 30 video appeared on Trump's account at a time when the presumptive Republican nominee for president while seeking to portray President Joe Biden as soft on anti-Semitism has himself repeatedly faced criticism for using language and rhetoric associated with Nazi Germany. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Posted and shared on the former president's true social account while he was on a lunch break from his Manhattan hush money trial. Yeah, that, yeah. While you're on court, while you're in court for a criminal trial, maybe not issue propaganda with references to Third Reich in the... I'm just mm -hmm. saying if you want to improve your odds. What the fuck? Well, one of the, one of the, <laughs> one of the tweets I'm reading right now, I'll, 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 I'm not going to put it on the screen, but I'll say it once. Uh, all we have to do now is let Christy Gnome know that the orange turd is a sick puppy and all her problems will be solved. Oh my god, that's not that no, I, I can't I can't make those no, no, those, no, no. Those, are, those are that's why I said I'm not putting it on the screen. I'm just like wow. Jeez. <clears throat> those are oh boy, wow. Yeah. And uh listen, uh I, you've probably seen it as well since we're talking US. Um it devolved into a shit show the other day mm -hmm. uh between um representative jasmine crockett which i who i think we've shown once on this show because she had just delivered a julia sugar baker style takedown at one point um and yeah the, there was i'm not exactly sure what committee was meeting or something but it was a committee on which uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene was also sitting and um, it devolved very very quickly uh, now there's a whole bunch of stuff that has fallen out of this in terms of debates about language uh, debates well, about Jasmine racism 
debates about. Uh, but without condoning mm. any language, uh, just look how this just becomes a shit show. When you have people that are someplace for the purposes of being shit disturbers, rather than rowing in the same direction of the team as the rest of the team. Mm. This is what happens. I'd like to know if any of the Democrats on this committee are employing uh, Judge Mershon's daughter. Please tell me what that has to do with Mary Garland. Is she a porn star? Oh, Goldman, that's right. He's advising. Okay. He's advising who? Okay, let's put a stop right there. They're at a committee hearing this because some people want to file articles of impeachment against the attorney general. Mm -hmm. She's asking about, Mar Marjorie Taylor Greene's asking about Judge Mershon. Judge Mershon is the judge mm -hmm. in Trump's case. Are any of the Democrats employing his daughter? And somebody says, is she a porn star? Mm -hmm. Okay. Trump's got a gag order where he can't go and defame everybody. So now he's gotten everybody on the Republican team to, to do, do it for him because yeah. there's no gag orders on them. They're showing up at the court now. Some of them have even missed time in the legislature to show up at the court. The speaker, Mike Johnson, mm -hmm. went to a mic and basically said that the justice system was corrupt. The speaker of the house, mm -hmm. the speaker of the house, is telling the American people. And this is what we get. Are you hiring or are you hiring the judge's daughter? Is she a porn star? Yeah. Then do you do you know what we're here for? You know we're here about oh, just a, uh, I don't think you know what you're here for. Well, you the one talking about I guess I, I think your fake eyelashes are messing up no, what you're ain't nothing. Hold on, hold on. Listen. <laughs> Order, Mr. Chairman. That's beneath would even you order, 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 order of your committee. Order. I do have a point of order, and I would like uh, to move to to take down Ms. Green's words. That is absolutely okay. unacceptable. How dare you uh, 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 attack the physical Lady appearance of another suspend. person? Are your move feelings hurt? Her words down. Aww. Oh, oh, girl, baby, girl. Oh, really? Don't even. Play, baby, girl. Gonna, I don't. We think are going to move, and we're going to take your words down. Thank I you second that motion. So, so who will have to fail? Okay. Ms. Green right agrees to strike her words. I believe she's she apologized. No, no, no. Mr. Perry, Mr. Okay, hold on. Then after Mr. Perry's going to be recognized, then Ms. Green. I'm not has apologizing. Well, seconds. then okay, you're reserve not striking the right to your object. words. Perry, I am Mr. not Perry. apologizing. No, let's go. Come on, guys. Why don't you debate me? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, the the, the minority is no, self evident. Chair you're not. Yeah, you're, you're not. Out of order. You don't have enough you're intelligence. Out of order. Chair recognizes Mr. Perry. Okay, move to strike I'd the. Like to strike I move to strike the ladies' words. I move to strike the ladies' words again. That's two requests to strike. That's two requests to strike. That's two requests to strike. Oh, they cannot take the so words. There's another motion to strike her words again. Please. All right, okay, get your here's, members under here's the correct the correct apology. Miss Green, do you ask unanimous do you agree to unanimous consent to strike your words? I repeat again for the second time. Yes, I'll strike right. my words, that, but I'm not right. apologizing. Without objection. Without not objection. Apologizing. Mr. Chair, point of order. Who's, who's? It's me. Miss Crockett. Yeah, Crockett. I'm just curious, just to better understand your ruling. If someone on this committee then starts talking about somebody's bleach blonde, bad built butch body, that would not be engaging in personalities, correct? A uh, uh, what now? <laughs> Chairman. I'm I, make a, I make a motion to strike those I, I words. Don't, I don't think that's Hold a on. parliament. I'm trying to find clarification on what qualifies. Chairman, I, I motion to I strike no those words. I have no idea what you just said. We're not gonna. We're not gonna do this. Look, you guys. Earlier, literally just. Oh, you just, you just, just voted to do it. it first, so you just voted to do it. Order, order. I'm trying to get clarification. Look at. Calm down. Calm no, down. no, 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 because this I is what like y'all do. The, so I'm trying hey, to get Ms. clarification. Ms. Crockett, you're not you recognized. Like, Ms. Crockett. I can't hear you with your and yelling. You don't want calm me to down. Be, no. Can you please calm don't down? Don't tell me to calm down. Calm down. Because y'all talk calm noise, down. and then you you're can't take control. it. You're out of control. Because if I Look, come and talk shit about her, y'all don't have a problem. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. All right, Chair, Chair, okay. Order. Chair now recognize. Jesus. Bleach blonde, bad built, butch body. 
the preschool from which no one graduates. Clearly. Jasmine Crockett, I, I don't think you should try and take her on. She is a black congresswoman from Dallas, Texas. That lady knows how to be tough. Marjorie Taylor Greene was only there to cause shit. Mm -hmm, that was it. Only there to cause shit. Nothing more. There's nothing she said in that whole that had anything to do with why they were there. That's why Jasmine Crockett says, "Do you know why we're here?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was to discuss your guy, your guys's move to try to impeach. Mm -hmm. She's sabotaging her own party's move to try to impeach Merrick Garland <clears throat> by bringing up Mershon and then sending the whole thing. She's yeah. not very smart. She's really not. Nobody likes her. And um, I give permission to strike the words, but I don't apologize. Sounds a lot like I withdraw and replace. Mm -hmm. Yes. On the day that the runt got punted mm -hmm. from the House of Commons. They're both doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. They're both yeah. using their hearings and their House of Commons or their Congress time to do these things, to get these clips, to hijack the process. That's all it is. Nothing more. Conservatives turn around and they say like this, oh, we're not Americanizing, we're not like that. It's the same damn playbook. Mm -hmm. so I withdraw and replace was the Canadian version of this. Yeah. There's one playbook. It's all downloaded from the IDU central brain. Mm -hmm. None of this is original. None of this is because they're stupid or they're obtuse. This is a plan. It's strategic. This is what they are doing with your money. Well. This is how they are respecting your time. We gotta demand better. Yeah. We gotta demand better, kids. Ah, oh, boy. Now, here's a good one. We have uh, Karina Gould. We haven't seen her a lot because, well, no. she's way on mater. She's away on maternity leave. But, uh, well. She has a way of putting things right and delivering things simply. And, you know, she looks like a nice, sweet person who would just be kind. And, but uh, you, you don't mess with her either. No, she's <laughs> smart. And... Yes. yes, she's very, she's whip smart. Um, I love this. So please. As we enjoy. head into the May long weekend, here's something that we should all reflect on. Two weeks ago, Mr. Polyev said the quiet part out loud. In speaking with the Canadian Police Association, he casually mentioned that he was going to make his own laws and use the notwithstanding clause to make them charter compliant. <laughs> he basically said that he was going to start taking away the rights of Canadians. But he intimated, don't worry, not your rights the rights of others. Now, when someone tells you that they're going to start taking away the rights of Canadians, alarm bells should go up because it might not be your rights today, but it could very well be your rights tomorrow. And let's not forget, Mr. Polyev has done this before. When he was Minister of Democratic Reform, he was the first Canadian minister, to my knowledge, to take away the democratic rights of Canadians. He made it harder for 500,000, half a million Canadians to vote federally. And alarm bells went up at the time, whether it was elections experts, observers, academics, the media, Canadians writ large were concerned that he was making Canada less democratic. And if you are worried and watching what's happening in the United States with horror when it comes to reproductive rights, just remember, his anti-women's rights conservative MPs and the anti-choice uh, movement here in Canada 
are already thinking about how they can apply those same laws and make it harder for Canadian women to access abortion and health care here in Canada. Now, when I was Minister of Democratic Institutions, I reversed his anti-democratic laws and made it easier for hundreds of thousands of Canadians to vote. Because at the end of the day, I believe in people's rights to vote and I believe in their right to democracy. And our government is committed to making sure that we uphold the rights of Canadians, whether it's their right to access abortion, their right to health care, or their right to participate in democracy. We are going to do that. So this long weekend, I challenge you to figure out how you are going to continue to protect our rights and freedoms. And I'll give you a hint. It starts by telling Mr. Polyev to keep his hands off of the rights and freedoms of all Canadians. Don't miss with Miss Gould. And did she you notice? Cool you. And did you notice the delivery? Mm -hmm. Yep. Effortless. Walking, casually talking, conversational, hand movements, gestures, no facial mm -hmm. expressions, just normal, like she's just having a chat. Really? Do you know how hard it is to do that? Mm -hmm. To talk for that long? I don't, I don't Hardly know. make a stumble? <laughs> Look casual, look natural, walking, look at the camera. It's, she is good. She is real good. Oh, yes. <laughs> yep. Calm and rational, Tabby G. Tone and countertone. Because calm and rational is not what the PP cons are giving us now, is it? It's a battle of tone and countertone. I love her. And now we know and now we know why conservatives dislike her particularly because, well, after 20 years of Pierre Polyev, only one legislative achievement, and well, she reversed it, so he's got none. Mm -hmm. Two decades of Polyev. One legislative achievement which ended up sinking his party and then was summarily reversed what a legacy mm -hmm. and this guy thinks he can be prime minister i don't know but <clears throat> any job i've been at for 20 years and didn't produce one thing I think I'd be asked to um, not come back. I, I don't think I would have the balls to be asking for promotion. And then and even the bigger ones have strutting around like it was inevitable that I was going to get one. Mm -hmm. I mean, think of it. Janet Jackson were singing, What Have You Done For Me Lately? She could have been singing the same damn song for 20 years and his would have been sweet fuck all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he's never achieved anything in his, in his pathetic, miserable life. <sighs> but he wants to be prime minister. Hey, he just hey, wants hey, power. Hey. He doesn't want to govern. He only wants power. I know, but just, that's why I keep on saying, Fee, always beware of the person that really, 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 really wants power. God. That is not uh not good. Not good at all. All right. Um I just found out that um all the research I did for this for today's show, uh just magically vanished oh, that happened. Uh, from uh, the file where I saved it. Oh, so uh, I'm from this point on, I am flying by the seat of my pants, kids and cubs, just so you know. Uh, yep. Uh, everything just, uh, it was on my screen and um, <clears throat> it's uh, literally 
Well, I'll show you. Literally, this is all the research I have now. Everything just disappeared. Really? <laughs> That's it. Those are my notes. I had like four pages of notes and that's all that's left. It just vanished right off my screen. I have no idea how that happened, but that's not a problem because I remember where I got this first material. So I'll just have to go back to that. Uh, <laughs> um, there's a big development. It's not so much in Canada, but uh, in the internationally, if we're talking about uh, the Israel Gaza thing, um, we talked uh, about um, the legal action, I guess I could call it, at the International Court of Justice where South Africa uh, was leading the way and other countries were coming in and they were trying to get uh, the International Court of Justice to deliver a ruling. Um, and the Inter International Court of Justice doesn't really have teeth in the way that the International Criminal Court does. Um, so it seems that uh, <clears throat> the International Criminal Court is now considering issuing warrants in the whole thing. Mm. And uh, if they're issuing uh, warrants, um, it is for war crimes, right? or crimes against humanity or something. Uh, if the right now the warrants have not been issued, there's been an application for warrants. So there will be a three judge panel that will consider it and that will render a decision. But the chief prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, um, this is according to the CBC, well, to the Associated Press, but as reported in the CBC, uh, is seeking arrest warrants for three Hamas leaders, so uh, on on both sides, three Hamas leaders, and uh, two members um, of the government on the uh, Israel Israel side. Uh, the chief international prosecutor is named Karim Khan, and he says that he believes Netanyahu and that his defense minister Yoav Gallant and three Hamas leaders, Yewa Sinwar, Mohammed Beif, and Ismail Haneya are responsible for war crimes and crimes against humanity in the Gaza Strip in Israel. So the prosecutor has to request the warrants, like I said, in a pretrial panel of three judges. They use, it says, according to this, could take an average of about, it takes about an average of about two months to consider the evidence to determine if the proceedings can move forward. Now, Israel is not a member of the court, uh, and therefore it says that it doesn't follow under their, its jurisdiction but uh, the court itself uh, started making decisions in the 2015 that says that they do have jurisdiction over Gaza. However, so if the crimes happened in Gaza, then according to the court, legally, internationally, I'm guessing the argument would be it doesn't matter if Israel is a signatory or not to the court. The crimes didn't happen in Israel. For Israel now, for Hamas, this if they fall under the jurisdiction of the court, then what they did in Israel would indeed be a war crime for the jurisdiction of the court, because, right? So, um, so yeah, uh, the the argument that before 2015, the argument that the uh, that Israel wasn't a signatory was usually all that needed to be said, mm -hmm. and. Then, but now that there's some case law that's been uh, being built over the international case law that's been going on and hasn't been challenged over the last nine years, the, the court now has precedent in that sense. Um, so according, according to this article, if the warrants, warrant, arrest warrants are issued, Netanyahu and Galant do not face immediate risk of prosecution, um, but it could affect their ability to travel, which is not great when you're an international leader at war. Uh, Israel Foreign Minister Israel Katz said the chief prosecutor's decision to seek the arrest warrants against Israel's leaders is a, quote, historic disgrace that will be remembered forever. He said he would form a special committee to fight back against any such action and would work with world leaders to ensure that any such warrants are not enforced on Israel's leaders. 
Benny Gantz, a former military chief and member of Israel's war cabinet with Netanyahu and Gallant, harshly criticized Khan's announcement saying Israel fights with, quote, one of the strictest moral codes and has a robust judiciary capable of investigating itself. Quote, the state of Israel is waging one of the just wars fought in modern history following a reprehensible, mass reprehensible massacre perpetrated by a terrorist Hamas on the 7th of October. The prosecutor's position to apply for arrest warrants is in itself a crime of historic proportion to be remembered for generations. The Hamas militant group denounced the ICC's prosecutor's request to seek the arrest of its leaders. So nobody's happy. <laughs> In a statement, Hamas accused the prosecutor of tying the trying to, quote, equate the victim with the executioner. It said it has the right to resist Israel occupation, included, including, quote, armed resistance. It also criticized the court for seeking the arrests of only two Israeli leaders and said it should seek warrants for the others. Uh, both Sinwar and Daif are believed to be hiding in Gaza as Israel tries to hunt them down, but Hanaya, the supreme leader of the Islamic militant group, is based in Qatar and frequently travels across the region. And, and uh, yeah. So, and I, like we mentioned, uh, the case in the, at the International Court of Justice as well, where Israel, uh, South Africa is accusing Israel of genocide is still uh, going on parallel to that. Uh, Khan's request for warrants in the Israel-Gaza conflict come about 14 minutes after the court issued an arrest warrant for Russian President Vladimir Putin for war crimes, accusing him of personal responsibility for abductions of children from Ukraine. So, um, yeah, um, this is this raises things up a very significant notch. Mm -hmm. The application. Uh, what becomes of it, we don't know. But yeah, is. if the warrants are granted, uh, it will raise it even more. Mm -hmm. Right. And it seems that over there, there are also some. Netanyahu's government is not as united as it was. So you have uh, Benny Gantz, who we mentioned here, and Yoav Gallant, who is. Now, as it weren't, uh, both of them, uh, <sighs> these terms are all like really rel relative, for lack of better words, they're more moderate than Netanyahu. So they're kind of like thinking, you know what, this is my stop. Mm -hmm. One of them actually like sort of put out an ultimatum saying like, you know, if things weren't fixed by about, you know, June 8th or something, uh, that they would walk. They would just leave the government, and it's a it's a very you know loose co not a loose coalition a, a thin coalition that doesn't have a, a huge majority in terms of uh, seats in the Nes in the Knesset. So, which would mean is if that side abandons him, um, Netanyahu's closest allies are the furthest right of the furthest right, the Ben Kavirs. Um, and if it remains true that Netanyahu is not only interest, Netanyahu's interest in prosecuting this war is not only in response to what happened on October 7th, but that there's a personal interest in it as well, because, well, he himself is on trial, uh, or not on trial. I don't know how. I don't know what you would say, but he's at risk for corruption of, of various kinds of uh, going to jail himself, which is why he was trying to change the laws uh, for how the Supreme Court can do its thing. Which was that was that was leading to the protests that were happening in Israel before all of this started. Um, so Netanyahu, who has a vested interest in keeping this war going for as long as possible because so long as he's doing that, he assumes he cannot be prosecuted for what had, everything that happened before the war for, for which his own country was prosecuting him. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's quite possible that in a few months from now, um, Israel could have a new leader. It, it, it's entirely plausible, yes. Because if Benny Gantz 
pulls his support and brings his faction with him out. Um, it becomes much harder for Netanyahu to prosecute the war. And if his allies are only the people who are on the furthest right, um, that only sets him up to be doing things that are even more violent. And arguably genocide <laughs> I'm not um, this this could take a bad turn mm -hmm. because once again as was the case for the president of Iran it's uh, the devil you know it's who replaces and uh, in that case what they're talking about it seems that uh I didn't know this but uh, until this morning, but uh, the uh, Supreme Leader in Iran, the Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, he's 85. Mm. So Ibrahim Raisi he really was his protege. He was like the next in line. It was just going to be him. And now it looks like the successor will be his eldest son, the current Supreme Leader's eldest son. So now it looks, starts looking a bit like a family dynasty rather than a... So, but again... Is everybody in those upper echelons going to be happy with that? This is a lot of stuff. Again, three poles, Saudi Arabia, Israel, and Iran. Netanyahu might not be prime minister a couple of months from now. And Iran is going to have a new president. And there's probably going to be a power struggle for who gets to become the next supreme leader. That brings lots of potential for instability mm -hmm. and really, really bad decision making. So, uh, hold on to your hats, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Cross your fingers. Uh, because yeah, things might be getting a little, a little rough in international news. All right, uh, do you have something, Mister Busy? Uh, there's just lots of stuff that's coming across my feed, but none of it's really pertinent or, or uh, okay, blending into the conversation this morning. Right. I'm just trying to filter through as much of it as I can. But All right. um, there's one, also one thing I do. We did we discuss? You know, we did discuss that yesterday. How Polyev lied blatantly about how. Um, all rifles will be made illegal. Yeah. yeah, we discussed that already. Yep. Okay, well, no, there's more stuff here. Uh, the federal government for people out uh, in out west, Kit Cassie, and who are especially people who are, on the, who are into uh, who are into farming. <laughs> well, <laughs> for people who farm, who earn their living. <laughs> I'm really into farming. <laughs> you know, sometimes you start a sentence and it's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like I know what I want to say, but I, 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 I left off, I left, I left off the wrong foot. <laughs> so I don't know how to save the sentence. Uh, but uh, the federal government has appointed a new head of the Canadian Grain Commission. His name is uh, David Hunt. Um, he has 28 years experience in the agricultural world. And uh, I believe he was in politics beforehand. Uh, he says, uh, I've been involved in the agricultural sector for over 25 years. And most recently, I worked in the government of Manitoba as an assistant deputy minister of agriculture. So this opportunity came up and they invited people to compete for the role of chief commissioner. And it's something that appealed to me in part because of the mandate of the Canadian Green Commission, the commission's reputation and being able to take my skills from a provincial level to a national level. So um, he's only days in, so he doesn't, you know, when they're asking him about like, you know, what are your plans or whatnot, just, well, you know, I'm still trying to familiarize myself right. with it. Uh, and uh, there are, uh, um, the way that it's structured is that there's a commissioner, but he's got a team of three people uh, under him that are sort of, there are more people, but like three key people uh, there as well. So it sort of makes like a, uh, a bit like a like a four-person group 
that uh, that really looks at uh, looks at things. Um, but uh, he's talking about stuff like uh, uh, one because we don't get to hear about it. They're asking about what it is that does it do. Um, well, their role is to ensure the quality and consistency of grain supply. Uh, they have a large role in grading grain, and they have a role in a in variety development. So uh, the Canadian Grain Commission actually has a huge scientific component to it because as the environment changes, they have to be doing research. So they actually have a grain research lab in Winnipeg to confirm standards uh, and uh, to be able to uh, find other ways of ensuring quality, consistency, and safety of the grain. And uh, like I said, probably adapting uh, a variety of grains for how weather changes. Mm -hmm. more drought resistant be able to better tolerate heat uh that type of stuff so uh yeah new commissioner at the federal grain commission never thought i'd be reporting on that no <laughs> but hey something, uh, but it's a big country right like yeah. this and we, you know it was like we talk a lot about the cities and whatnot but these are the types of things you know there's a whole bunch of people in canada who just who live in rural areas and mm -hmm. they, these types of news items are, are super important for them. Oh, yes. Well, you remember when we were younger, there used to be the farm report early in the morning right? on television. And, uh, of course, they, they, they uh, SCTV parodied that with the uh, farm film report. Big Jim, Her <laughs> Big Jim uh, Billy Saw Hurok and Big Jim, I can't remember what Big Jim's name was. It was uh, John Candy and, and um, the late... Uh, Jeez, he just passed away. They're both gone now, when I think about it. Um, not Eugene Levy. No, he's still very much with us. Joe Flaherty? Uh, thank you. Joe Flaherty okay. and John Candy. Uh, Big Jim McBob and Billy Saul Hurock. May the good Lord take a liking to you and blow you up real soon. <laughs> <laughs> all they ever talked about was, uh, I remember that movie, Thunderball? Yeah, they all blowed up real good in that one. Everybody gets blowed up in the movies. So it was a... It was a take on the farm report that we used to get, which talked about, you know, the weather and, and grain prices and so on and so forth. But I haven't, I don't, that, that seems to have disappeared. I haven't seen that in decades. Neither have I. Like, but I do remember that vividly when I was a child. That was on very early in the morning. The farm report was on before farmers would go out to, you know, tend to the fields. They'd watch the farm report and then go on with their day. I, I just had something come across my feet here that I'm... <clears throat> I did not know about this before. Uh, this was from last night, actually. Uh, just a reminder that Speaker Mike Johnson, so Speaker of the House in the United States, mm -hmm. um, has proposed cuts of $2 trillion from Medicare, $3 trillion from Medicaid and the Affordable Care Act, and $750 billion from Social Security. Basically, what he's saying is, to hell with the poors. That's what he's saying. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, indeed, five trillion um, in cuts and another seven hundred and fifty billion from Social Security, almost six trillion dollars. Unbelievable. Yeah, crazy. Eh? Lots of money. Ah oh, man, um, Jagmeet Singh is um, using his favorite word again, forced. Of course. Uh, but this case, uh, he there. Is going to force a vote in the House of Commons on imposing an excess profits tax on big grocers as Canadians struggle with rising foods. He sent a letter to both uh, Trudeau and uh, Poliev stating uh, that uh, they were prompted to act, quote, because both of them refused to meaningfully tackle corporate greed. Quote, due to your failure, Canadians are paying high prices and they've had to take matters in their own hands by boycotting big grocery stores, forcing big grocery chains. Sorry. I forgot to drink. Mm. Big grocery chains to pay what they owe would encourage them to lower their prices. It would also help recover some of the money you have both handed out to big grocery store chains so that Canadians could get another grocery rebate to give them more breathing room in their family budgets. When he's talking about more money, there was another $26 million uh, through that uh, Environment uh, Adaptation Fund or whatnot to help. Um, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, another chain, I can't remember which one it was, to um, buy more equipment that would reduce uh, the carbon footprint. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. The NDP says it will force the debate today on, a concurring, on concurring with a motion passed by the House Finance Committee calling for an excess profit tax on grocers. Now, when Jagmeet Singh 
says that he's forcing the federal government to that. Um, just a note, on March 22nd, iPolitics reported that Liberal MPs voted in favor of excess profits tax for big grocery chains. So um, Jagmeet here is going to claim that he's forcing them to do something they've already done. Of course just, he is. Just, just so you know. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's all staging, folks. It's all staging. Uh, Singh's letter, dated May 17th, said the NDP's effort would give Polyev and Trudeau a chance to show people where you stand. It is the government's role to protect consumers from the unmitigated corporate greed that continues to drive up prices. The committee motion was introduced by NDP uh, uh, MP Daniel Blakey early in the year, and it was passed with support from Liberals and Bloc Québécois. So both the Liberals and the Bloc and the NDP all agree. Mm -hmm. And they've already voted that they've agreed. So again, when Mr. Singh says we're forcing the government. Yeah, that's not that's, that's a poor okay. choice of words. But it was point. but it was a committee motion introduced by the NDP. So give credit as Daniel Blakey. But mm -hmm. of course, uh, Daniel Blakey has since resigned as, as, as an MP to take a job with a uh, well, canoe in Manitoba. So yes. well, you know. Uh, <laughs> all conservative committee members voted in opposition. Just so you know, conservative MP Philip Lawrence, which is uh, the guy we showed you on the, the video, he was sitting in the committee and he was doing the, oh, come on thing like this and trying to Americanize in it mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah, the guy that actually wasn't on the committee, but like had somebody tap out to sub in so he could do that little piece of performance art on that particular day. That guy here. Conservative MP Philip Lawrence said at the time that his party agreed that Canada was facing an affordability crisis, but noted, quote, there's a very easy solution to reducing the cost of food, and that's to eliminate the carbon tax. Yes, and once you've eliminated the carbon tax and the grocery chain just decides to not change the price whatsoever, or you've eliminated the carbon tax and uh, your loaf of bread goes down 1.2 cents. Mm -hmm. Oh, how we'll feast tonight. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all you fun. have to do canada to make food more affordable so that nobody ever goes hungry again and all the children are fed and all the schools is just eliminate the carbon tax and then if you still can't eat well it's your own damn fault because you're just too damn lazy pull yourself up by your damn bootstraps we got nothing for you yeah see because i thought the, the we eliminated the carbon tax you should be able to eat now the school food program was actually going to help with that problem. That was the one the conservatives voted against, feeding children. Remember that. Remember that when you vote next time. Remember that, folks. They voted against feeding children. They're supposed to serve all Canadians, but I guess kids can't vote or donate or run a corporation. That goes out, I guess. Well, fuck them, right? Mm-hmm. They don't need to eat. Come on, Johnny. We can't, Canada can't afford Pierre Polyev's next round of trips and to make sure you get some pablum. Mm. Who's going to be my little trooper? You are. <laughs> You'll take the hit for Uncle Pee Pee, won't you? Yes, you will. Somebody Who's a will. good boy? That's the conservatives. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah, terrible. We can't afford dad. We can't afford Daddy Peepee's basket of apples for his new rally and your kidney transplant this year. You gotta, you know, he needs that. He needs that rally apples. Gotta have the rally apples, man. Gotta have them. Besides, he only need one kidney. Yeah, you can survive with one. Come on. Find that rugged individualism. Mm hmm. Ugh. Uh, we gotta, we gotta wrap, sir. I have to uh, take care of a couple of things before I head into the office, and I'm running really short on time. So let's uh, let's put a bow on this one. All right, get some cups. Head her on out. Right. That's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Remember that sharing is caring, and word of mouth is priceless. So please tell your peeps and poops all about us. If you do not want to miss an episode, you do not have to. Thanks to the Ray Girl, she sponsored our pod page. And if you scan the QR code that Mr. Grizzly will just put up right there, 
right on cue. Thank you, good sir. Or go to podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. When you click subscribe there, when we have something fresh off the bandwidth, boom, it comes directly to you. And if you would like to get a little more beaver in your life, well then, you just need to march on down to our merch store at our Etsy shop. And if you go there, you'll find a whole bunch of items that you might like, a whole bunch of swag for you that has our True North Eager Beaver logo on it so that uh, you can show the world that you are an informed and engaged citizen. Thank you so much for going there. And I today, for some reason, I, I think I believe it's etsy.com slash ca slash shop slash t-n-e-b merch store off the top of my head and last yesterday i got it but i'm not sure if i got it right today but that's okay <laughs> and if you would like to help us in other ways yes it is there we go etsy.com slash ca slash shop slash t-n-e-b merch store if you would like to help us in other ways uh, please make like kit lane and go to our youtube page have a beyond awesome day everyone remember to smash the button before you leave she advises so if you go there like share subscribe let people know about us thank you very much it helps us we're really trying to get to a thousand and uh let's try to see if we can do it by canada day mm. that would be fun <laughs> it would be the exactly two year anniversary of our channel that's right yeah so yeah let's see if we get, get to a thousand by canada day and if you would like to help us in another way still the qr code by mr grizzly's head brings you to our tip jar so if you like the show you find you find that uh, we bring you a uh, good information and solid analysis and we curate news for you uh that you enjoy listening to and maybe you just like us and you want to encourage us to do more please uh, go over there and uh, treat us to a cup of coffee or a cup of hot chocolate we would really appreciate it thanks from the beaver lodge this is your oh because democracy is something that you do i am sorry uh, if you uh, live in new nova scotia there is a by-election today i believe uh, in uh in the town of pictou uh so whatever election is there for some reason the writing is not there pick to west sorry there you go uh so if you're there please make sure that uh, you go to vote uh very 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 important from the beaver lodge this is your eager beaver saying it could be a tough world out there so please be kind to and gentle with yourself mr grizzly some words of wisdom please uh, um i'm gonna borrow them from somebody else this morning because i'm really tired uh, okay this is um, somebody uh, doing something nice for a family member in a very strange way. If you're familiar with this individual, um, maybe you are, maybe you aren't. Uh, let's just say he's, he's a character in and of himself. <laughs> this is Two Turnt Tony, who um, is on TikTok. And this, I, I have a, just trying to load up a video here from him on uh, on twitter it's a TikTok video that he has on on twitter and uh well he he's helping out his sister and it's kind of well just watch so my first only fans paycheck came in today and i'm going to use 20 grand of it to pay off my sister's student loans because why the fuck not anthony you're gonna break my fucking door oh my god oh my god what is all this that is your student loans. What? Paid in full by my penis. That's really weird, but thank you. A blessing what you did for your sister. But did you ever think you should take that fucking money and buy your own fucking house? <laughs> I don't know if you noticed the, the duck he has with him. He has a pet duck that he takes with him everywhere. And his girlfriend wears a ski mask everywhere she goes. We have no idea what her face is like. <laughs> Two turnt Tony. You can find him on TikTok. He's he's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> and that was, like I said, he did a nice thing for his sister in a very strange way. <laughs> Just five words. Okay. <laughs> Speechless to start. Speechless to end. I'll see ya. <laughs> You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast.
The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Pepper Master. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. Just wanted to mention it because we had it in the title, but we never actually talked about it in the show. The Oilers are now officially Canada's team in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Yep. 3 2 win against the Vancouver Canucks. So the Oilers will be uh, facing the Dallas Stars, and uh, the Rangers will be facing the Panthers in the other uh, conference final. And uh, I really, 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 really do want to see a whole bunch of Edmonton Oilers fans in Oilers gear dancing the Beyonce dance to the St. Texas <laughs> when they come to town. Well, boom. It's Somebody a Texas make it Alberta, happen. Texas Alberta conference final. <laughs> Woo! He's saying Texas. Woo! Come on, Oilers, go get it. <laughs> I'll see you.